Hey guys, welcome back. I am here with my onion harvest. Yeah, my onion harvest was a complete mess. It was a day. So I figured I would sit down, talk about my onion harvest, but also talk about all the things I did differently growing onions this year that actually allowed me to succeed having big, nice, beautiful onions because this is my first year out of the three years I've tried to grow onions where I actually have beautiful, decent sized onions. So harvest day though was a complete mess. I woke up late. I had my alarm set and my alarm went off and I was like, oh, I have nothing to do today. That should have been my first warning. I needed to harvest these onions because we had rain coming in and a few days prior, we had a lot of really hot weather. We had feel likes of 103 and it really knocked out the onions majority of the onions were completely knocked over at that point and i needed to get them harvested before rain came in later that night i harvested them on friday the very last day of june so backtracking a bit i did start my onions from seed i started them the very first few days of january i'm not sure the exact day all i know is it was either january 1st or january 2nd i started my onion seeds um, i did transplant them out into the garden six weeks before my last frost which was uh, i believe it was march 5th i got them planted out into the garden and then I harvested them, like I just said, the last day of June. So it was a long time coming for these onions. You do have to start them quite early inside, but that's one thing I love about onions as well is during the dead of winter, when you really can't start much of anything else from seed, uh, you can start your onions. So I really do love growing onions. Okay, but back to harvest day. Harvest day was an interesting one. So, okay, I woke up late. Like I said, it was still 8 a.m. at that point. I woke up like in a panic because I wanted to get these onions out of the ground before it got really hot and a lot of sunshine. And then again, we had rain coming that evening. So I woke up at eight, immediately went outside and I was filming this, but it was just one of those days where everything I did just did not go right. Even though the, the overall harvest went fine. So I got all my onion harvested and I brought them into the garage and I laid them out all on a bunch of cardboard. But my game plan was to throw them up on one of my metal racks I have and whatever didn't fit on that metal rack, I was going to try to weave where I had all of my garlic hanging. So I did not expect how many onions I really truly grew. I thought I knew, but this is honestly I never succeeded this much when it came to onions. So I've never truly like seen the how much onion there really truly was until I got them into my garage and out of a garden bed. I know that sounds weird, but it's just like, it just feels different when it's not in the space that you originally grew them. So I got them into the garage and realized I had probably a lot more volume than I initially anticipated because I only had that one rack. I got everything on that rack and then my husband was like, um, they need to be spread out uh, further. It'll be a lot better for them, which obviously you give them more room, more, more airflow, the better they're going to cure. So he ended up throwing this together. This is a bunch of random wood we had laying around and some chicken wire. And at first he just built the one shelf. I started moving onions onto it. We realized that we still didn't have enough room to cure all of the onions. So he built a secondary shelf right on the top. They are laying out really beautifully. So I have onions on both sides. They're all laying out. I don't have any of the bulbs touching. This chicken wire and them laying out like this is really allowing a lot of airflow. So this ended up being like a day project of trial and error just from the start. I started I would say I probably started pulling onions by 8.30 in the morning. I got done pulling onions by nine, but from nine to 4.30, five o'clock, I was literally trying to figure out a solution for these onions. I thought I was prepared and I was not prepared. And it was one of those days that sometimes you have a game plan going into it and then you just have to completely change up your entire game plan. So harvest day was an interesting one, but I'm very, very, very happy about the harvest. So most of the onions actually turned out pretty uniform size. They all turned out really good size. They're all really close in size. I did have, there was that one section I told you guys in the garden tour where I was having issues with crabgrass and that little two by, probably two by four area uh, right there that was just 
not growing as well. Um, I did get some smaller onions out of that space. For example, a lot of those ones in that space turned out more like this and majority of the onions turned out like this. So I do still have a few smaller ones, but I honestly don't mind having a handful of smaller ones because you know, when you don't really need a whole onion, you just need like a smaller onion and then you can never buy a smaller onion. That's where those come in handy. <laughs> but I am very, very happy with how all of this turned out. So I've been having three fans go at all times. I have these big garage fans and then another house fan that is just on the garlic. I've been opening up my garage for majority of the day just to have really, really good airflow. We do not get any direct sun in this garage, which is an extra bonus to being able to open up the garage door. You don't want any direct sun hitting anything during your curing process. So. These are gonna stay here for three to four weeks, just like the onion, or just like the garlic. So the garlic, again, I will take down here in just a little bit, but the onions are going to live here about three or four weeks. I now, we also needed to figure out a solution for all these onions because again, we're gonna have potatoes coming out of the ground probably in like two to three weeks. So the garlic's gonna come out, onions are gonna be here, and then potatoes are gonna be here, then onions are gonna go out, then potatoes are gonna go out. Like there's going to be food in this garage for a few months. So now my other metal rack I originally planned to use for the onions, I can use for the potatoes, which I originally didn't have a plan for my potatoes because I'm hoping this is the year of the potato. Back to onions. Okay, so let's talk about everything I did differently when it came to onions this year that actually made me succeed in growing onions because there's a few, I would say minor tweaks that I did this year that I kind of combined my previous two years together and kind of did a few things differently. So I'm really happy about this. So let's just jump into all the things I did differently. So first and foremost, how I started them as seedlings. So I did start them relatively around the same time as I have in previous years. But when it came to how I seeded them out, you will see a million and one people tell you to just sow out like hundreds of onion seeds in a small little area because they're really easy to pull apart. They have really wiry roots. I have done this. My onion seedlings were nothing compared to what they were my first year and this year. So my very first year I did soil blocks, but I put about four, four to six, maybe even more per block. And I still had some pretty strong onion starts that came out of that, but they could have been better. I didn't feed them at all during that time. And that was it. Last year, I heavily sowed all of my onion seedlings and I thought they looked good, but honestly, they were pretty weak, especially compared to this year. So this year, I only sowed one to two seeds per soil block and they looked amazing. So I trim up my seedlings while they're inside. I cut back the greens where, where they're hitting about three to four inches. That way the base of the onion seedling can get really, really strong. That is something I do keep up on. But one thing I did differently this year is I stopped cutting any type of green off the onion once they went outside in the garden. So the first year I did not top my onions at all. Last year I did top my onions and I believe that is what caused me to have a terrible onion year. I was following a few different people that were saying to top their onions when they were starting to bulb, which I have now recently found out from all of my research last year. That is not what you want to do. I ended up reading some uh, just onion blogs and a few other things that just made a lot of sense. If you're opening up that green, especially during spring rainy season, you are asking for disease, which is what ended up happening to me last year. So this year I was like, I'm not cutting the green. So once they got transplanted outside, one thing I did differently this year is I didn't touch them. Onions were very, very hands off for me, minus feeding and watering. I really didn't do much. I did kind of spoon out the soil once or twice during the beginning, once they did start to bulb up a little bit, but really you don't need to do that much if you planted them out the way you need to plant them out. So when you are planting out onions, you do not want to plant out your onions deep at all. Um, you really don't, it's very, you have to be very attentive when you're planting your onions because if you plant them too deep, that is where the bulb is going to form. And then you're going to have soil blocking how much that bulb can really develop. So that's why some people tell you to spoon out the soil around the onion as they mature. I did this once they started to bulb up a little bit just to help them out a little bit. My soil was really loose and I also had a lot of mulch there and everything. So I was just getting it to the point where 
I really didn't have to worry about anything if the onions did get bigger, but I did spoon them out a few times while they were outside, but I did not cut the greens whatsoever. And I don't recommend doing that either. So another thing I did was I planted them out six weeks before my last average frost instead of four weeks before my last average frost. And I think this also made a big difference. So I previously have always planted out four weeks before my last average frost date, which for me is uh, my last average is around April 16th. So that would have been right around mid March this year. I planted them out March 5th. I wanted to get them out six weeks before I wanted them to really experience that cold temperature. So I started hardening them off mid February. I was really getting into full blown seed starting. I am Kansas 6B. We get cold, but on warmer days where we were hitting fifties and sixties, I was throwing my onions outside because they needed to get acquainted to those temperatures. So that is something also I did differently that I think made a huge difference, especially just having them out. So my onions ended up being outside during a minus 19, which they say that's typically the period where you need to watch your onions. I did cover them that one day, but we had a lot of like mid to higher 20s during that period that they were outside for just a short little period and they still did okay. But just note, uh, be very attentive to your weather schedule. You don't wanna go too fast, but I think you should plant them out about six weeks ahead of schedule before your last average. So one thing I thought was really important this year was I was really on top of my watering and I also was on top of my feeding. So while my seedlings were inside, I did feed them with an all purpose feeder um, a few times because soil blocks, you're gonna lose a lot of that nutrients really fast. And while they were inside for an eight week period, onions are heavy feeders, they definitely needed feed it. So I fed them twice while they were inside. And then when I moved them outside, I actually got a soil test done. And this is another thing I think made all the difference this year was getting a soil test done before I planted anything out. I did plant my onions before I got my results back, but I still knew what that soil was lacking about a week later. So I just added it to the top and top dressed everything. So I did a soil test and I swear the soil test has made all the difference this year. And I highly suggest doing it because again, I think that's made such a difference because for me, I had to treat my garden beds with mostly nitrogen and not much else. I had to lower the pH a little bit and that was all I really had to do this year. My garden beds were actually really high in phosphorus and potassium. So it was really interesting to see what my soil was actually lacking and what my crop might actually need. Because when I did my soil test, another thing I did was when I sent off that soil, I also told them what my plan was to plant into that soil. So then that way they knew exactly what my soil would need for the growth of that plant as well. And my whole garden pretty much just needed nitrogen out it was good on phosphorus and potassium, but I thought that was really interesting. And again, your soil health makes all the difference when it comes to your plants. So highly suggest doing a soil test if you can. Go through your local extension office. Um, it was really quick and simple. I have a whole video of the process. But when it comes to watering, so onions have a very shallow root system. So this year I was probably more on top of watering than I've ever been with onions again because I just knew they had a really shallow root system. The few top inches of my soil here dry out really, really fast. So I knew if I wanted to have big bulbing onions, I needed to make sure that that soil was pretty moist mo most of the time. So I was watering every day um, outside unless we got rain. Um, these onions got hit with a lot of water. They are heavy feeders and heavy drinkers. They need a lot of attention when it comes to that, but a lot of hands off of attention. There's not much you have to do outside of watering them and feeding them on occasion. So, but speaking of watering, another thing I did differently when it came to watering this year was I stopped watering for the last two weeks. We did get a little bit of rain in that two week period, but I did not water my onions. When I started to see signs of a few onions topping over, I had a handful of onions top over about two, three weeks ago now. So that was kind of my first sign like, all right, we are going to to pull back on watering. This was something I read this year. I mean, it totally makes sense because you do very similar things with all your root crops, with onions, potatoes. Um, my potatoes are currently not getting watered either, your onions. It really helps during the curing phase for your crop to not be super wet when you're pulling it out. That's just going to cause more 
humidity and issues and stuff while you're trying to cure your crop. So you kind of want them to dry out just a little bit before you pull them out. So yeah, I stopped watering completely two weeks beforehand. We probably got an inch and a half of rain, maybe two inches of rain. We got, we've been getting pretty consistent rain um, over that two weeks, uh, but really I didn't have to worry about much. So one thing that's really important to know is there are three different types of onions that you can grow depending on the area that you live in. So I am an intermediate area. I always wanna say indeterminate. I'm an intermediate. So there's a very limited amount of onion varieties that I've been able to find for my area being in this intermediate day zone. So I actually went with a hybrid this year. Previous years, I've done all heirlooms and I really wanted to try a storage variety hybrid that was going to be efficient for me. So I actually got my seeds from Johnny's. I grew majority of a variety called Calibra. I did do a few red onions, but this was an experiment for me because I was really curious to see how these would do versus onions I've grown in the past. So these red onions are onions I have grown for the last two years. They are, I think, red Cabernet from Botanical Interest. I'm never going to grow them again. Very, very disappointed. I only grew roughly like eight to 10 of these because I knew they probably weren't going to do well and I really didn't want to waste my time. But it was really interesting to see just the side-by-side -side comparison on how much better something that was a hybrid. And I mean, these are both in intermediate varieties, but a hybrid versus an heirloom in the garden and how this one actually performed for me. This was something I was really playing around with a lot this year. I chose a lot of hybrids for production and disease abilities and um, storage varieties because I really want to have a good production coming out of my smaller space since I am trying to get the most I possibly can out of my backyard. I chose a lot of hybrids this year. And honestly, I am very happy with this hybrid variety from Johnny's Calibra has just, it's done really good for me. And it's probably going to get grown again next year. And the last and final thing that I did differently when it came to growing onions this year was I planted them out slightly further apart. So uh, last year I, space things a little bit closer and I really felt like I could just space them a little bit further apart and they would do better. This was proven with the garlic. The garlic did really well. I had a lot of consistent size when it came to the garlic compared to previous years. Previous years I'd have a smaller one, a bigger one, a medium sized one, and this year I got a lot of consistency and that's exactly what I saw with the onions as well. I planted, I think I planted them, planted the onions roughly, I believe like eight inches apart. Um, so that's another thing to note. I had roughly two and a half garden beds worth. This is a 143, 143 onions. I might need to recount, but I believe it's 143 onions. So my plan with these onions, cause I keep getting this question cause I made a little short form video is what are you going to do with all that? So me and my husband go through about two to three onions a week. So this is pretty much a year's worth for us. This storage variety will last over six months, even more in good condition. So I am planning on braiding a good amount of this and hanging it up in my basement, but I am also going to be doing some onion powder with it. I recently got a freeze dryer and one thing I'm so excited about playing with is garlic powder and onion powder because it gets it into a more of a powdery state versus what your dehydrator can do and I've never liked what I could do with onion or garlic powder in the past when it comes to drying it out that way so this year I'm going to freeze dry it and I am so hyped I don't know how much I'm going to do yet but I do plan to probably powder out a decent amount but I do want to keep I would say I at least want to keep like 80 to maybe 90 of these onions. I'm going to powder out any of these probably smaller ones. Like I said earlier, I will say um, an, another thing that was really exciting about this year is these are the first onions that aren't just a strong tasting onion. I grabbed one the other day because I made burgers and it was a beautiful flavor. This is just a yellow onion. It's not a sweet onion. So I was expecting it to be a little bit more bold. It was a beautiful flavored onion. Another thing to note there. Either way, so that is what went on during harvest and what I did differently and what my plan is for all of these onions. And I couldn't be 
more proud of how these turned out. This was a lot of work learning how to do onions and everyone will tell you growing onions from seed can be pretty tricky and it takes some learning but once you learn it everyone's like girl you figured it out and I was like I hope so. Onions are one of those things that I've been wanting to try to grow for so long and succeed at because it's one of my favorite things. If I can grow a good amount of onions, potatoes, garlic, a lot of these staple crops, it's going to really allow me to succeed in the future. It's been a lot more work than I thought it would ever be to learn some of these things and to learn how to get better growing some of these things. I thought it'd be a lot easier, uh, but some things are just tricky. So keep that in mind, especially if you had issues growing onions in the past, don't give up. Um, I'm really, I'm just really happy about this onion harvest, I couldn't be more proud. But either way, this was my onion harvest and everything that went on and everything I did differently. I've been getting so many questions because a lot of you guys have been just very proud and I couldn't thank you enough for you guys cheering me on when it comes to this onion harvest. I just, I'm really proud of it, but that's where I'm gonna end today's video. Thanks for joining me today, guys. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.